What the heck is a Super Tuscan anyway? All right, welcome back to Drinking It In. I'm your host, Chris Cassara. We're here to help you know more and drink better, and today we're gonna try to explain uh, a little something about Super Tuscan wines. So we've done a few episodes on wines from the region of Tuscany, uh, mainly Chianti Classico and Brunello di Montalcino. Uh, Chianti and Brunello representing um, specific regions within Tuscany where the Sangiovese grape is, um, is used uh, you know, really primarily to make those wines. <clears throat> Um, way back when, there were some winemakers in Tuscany who thought that they could do uh, really good things with other grapes. You know, the non-native grapes uh, that go into your Chiantis or certainly a non-native Sangiovese that goes, uh, goes into Brunello. And they, wanted, they started um, planting Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot and some of those French varieties and making, you know, but in making these wines, they couldn't classify those wines as, you know, any of the existing uh, DOCs or DOCGs. So if I go and make a gorgeous wine that's Sangiovese Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, um, and I am basically doing it within probably the confines pretty close to my Brunello vines, like Chachi Piccolomini did, um, I need to classify it as an IGT wine. Um, and those affectionately became known as Super Tuscan uh, over the past, uh, it's probably 20 years ago. So IGT stands for Indic Indicazione Geografica Tipica. So you can see it on this label and it, may, it basically means it's a, uh, it's a wine typical of the, uh, of the geographic area. It basically means nothing. It just means it's, you know, it's not Brunello, it's not Chianti, uh, it's not Chianti Classico. Um, it's a wine that's kind of made at the, uh, you know, at the winemaker's, uh, I guess, whims. So what I'm pouring here is the Chachi, Chachi, Chachi Piccolomini de Aragona, um, Toscana IGT. And um, it's, this wine is primarily um, Sangiovese, but it's got Cabernet and Merlot in it as well from the 2017 vintage. Now, I couldn't get any real info in terms of the proportions. Um, I think the description on the website actually says it's mostly Sangiovese with some Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon, so take my word for it. So now um, you can go out and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on some of the most expensive Super Tuscans in the world from names such as Masetto, Sasakaya, or Soldera, uh, all three of which I have not had. Um, but in this case, I spent uh, $16 on a wine, an IGT wine from a producer I know I love. So, and um, tasted a little bit and frankly, it's gorgeous. And there's, uh, and I think it's, it's worthwhile for, for you guys as you get more familiar with, with uh, vineyards and producers you like from those traditional regions um, if you see one of their wines that just has an IGT um, label or a Toscana label, um, it's worth giving it a try and you can usually get really good, um, good values out of it. So again, so let's see what, let's see what Chachi, Chachi brings to the table. So, I mean, you can smell that this is, you, you could tell by the aromas that this is a, um, Sangiovese based wine. It has that, uh, those cherry aromas. It's a little dusty, um, but it's, it's a little, it's, it's bigger. It smells bigger than the Sangiovese wines that you're used to having. And, and a little dark. So like there's almost a little bit of a blackberry jam note in here along with the cherries. So I think, I think that's just because there's Merlot and Cabernet in here. Logically, it makes sense. Let's see what, uh, let's see what it tastes like though. It's really pretty. There's probably, there's, there's a little, there's a little floral note in there too. Mm. Damn. So there's a pleasant bitterness to this. Um, it's really light on the palate. 
It's so easy to drink. Um, the cherries come through. There's a little tannin, um, you know, dries your mouth out a little bit, but nothing that's oppressive. Um, this is actually this is surprisingly easy to drink. I think, and actually, so I'm going to be doing a um, Thanksgiving alternatives uh, wine episode, and I would I, I actually think this would be a great um, this would be a, a really good wine for uh, Thanksgiving because it has some of those Pinot Noir characteristics, but you know, just it's something different, and it's not just the same old wine that you drink every year. Um, this is really nice. Shockingly finessed. Fourteen percent by volume. Interesting. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's not heavy. It doesn't feel like that. So I think in the end, you know, just trying to give you a little bit of background on Super Tuscans and kind of how to search and find some some really good value wines. Right. Find a producer that you like in you know your um, Brunello or Chianti world and see if they do release um, a Toscana, an IGT wine. And um, chances are you're gonna really like it and it's not gonna break the bank. So hope this helps. Um, thank you for joining. Thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for, right? I mean, come on. There's loads of, loads of info on wine and cocktails on this channel um, and it's only gonna grow. I'm gonna keep on keeping on and um, I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks again.